nice cavity there. Yeah, I think we know some people take care of that little problem. I think I might know a guy. Hey, welcome to Two Guys Garage. Today, it's gonna be a lot about hardware. And today is all about marriage. Marriage. Be engine transmission. All right, well, that's true. We're gonna do some installs today with motors and trans. And while we're talking about trans, a lot of inside scoop, so you guys stick around. All right, we're back on our 66 Nova project, and we've got a 350 Chevy here that we rebuilt, and Bird actually went over and they took it to the dyno, got about 400 horsepower. Yeah, it's starting to run pretty strong. Yeah. Now, it's in a 3,500 pound Nova. It should get you down the road hard. Yeah. So we've got a, a rear main seal here that's a more modern rear main seal. It's got aluminum heads. It's got a nice intake. I like these valve covers. These are really cool looking. And uh, this thing should really haul. Now, what we're doing is trying to pick our transmission. And what we've come up with is the uh, 700R4. Yeah, and the 700R4 has been around for actually a long time. 82, they came out with the overdrive and the lockup converter. They've had several generations, but when they went electronic, they called it a 4L60E for electronic. So somewhere around what, about 93, I believe, they put electronics in this casing. So everything looks pretty similar, but the throttle valve's gone and the TV cable down there is gone as well. So what they did is made a 13 pin connector. Now all the electronics run right through this, control all your shift points. Yeah, now that you can actually take this transmission, even though it's a more modern one, you can bolt it right up to the old Chevy, yeah. right up to the old piece. In fact, even the torque converter, you can flip the torque converters between the two, they still match up. Yeah, so the first gen of the 4L60E was basically in this casing. This is a second gen, a little more stiffness. Look at the sort of double ribbon we've got in here. Instead of just having a bolt pattern around basically top of center line, now we've got a bolt pattern that can go all the way around, connect maybe to a structural oil pan. And so powertrain bending, instead of trying to hold everything up here, can now really connect, good a connection between the two. So the structure's improved, the electronics are improved. So we're working from a great design and modernizing it. Yeah, debating on which one to use, you know, if you were to use a more modern transmission, you can hook it up to electronics and you can use like a paddle shifter if you want to do something yeah, really like cool. that. But we're going a little more old school, a little bit more simple, you know, a little bit more classic kind of muscle car style and uh, easy to hook up. It's simple and a proven formula. So I think we're going to end up going with this. Yeah, both versions are great, but this one's a little bit more simple and stick around. I'm going to show you some cool electronics up on the bench. Let me get playing around here. We've already put a quart of uh, transmission fluid into the torque converter, so that's done. Slide it onto the shaft. Now I'm going to go ahead and get these started, made them together, and bolt it up, and we'll get it into the car. Now I got the internals that are different on these two transmissions, my manual valve body and my electronic. Now if you've ever seen an electronic circuit, it looks a little bit like this, but instead of relays and resistors, capacitors and whatnot, I've got spool valves, I've got check balls and springs and things like that. Now this is basically just fluid circuits. And in these fluid circuits, I've got a lot of spool valves. Now a spool valve is essentially just a shaft with maybe a piston where I want it. And as I move back and forth, I'm gonna open up one passage, close off maybe another one. So if I flip it over, you can see these valve bodies actually look pretty similar. This one's just all mechanical. This one's got electronics in it. So here's my TV cable. As that cable starts to push on here, I'm gonna build up pressure. I might get to one spool valve, build up enough pressure to shift from first to second. You know, eventually I'll build up more pressure. I'm ready to go from second to third. Now in the electronic version, you know, I've got these solenoids. So the solenoid's gonna do a lot of the work for me. And because I got a brain, I can tell which solenoid what to do to go from one shift to the next. So that's the major difference going on inside of here. When we come back, you know, we pick Monster because they know how to build these pretty beefy. We got a good solid motor, we want a strong trance. So we're gonna come back, show you some of those little internal beef ups, stick around. I'm gonna be prepping, sanding, and painting my classic Chevy. What do I need to do from a safety standpoint to get ready? If you're gonna work around paint fumes or sanding dust, you need to get good respiratory protection. Even brief unprotected exposure can cause irritation or lead to serious health problems. The pros choose 3M respirators for painting, sanding, and even grinding. They're designed for comfort, coolness, and ultimate protection. Don't forget the safety glasses and gloves too. 
This tip is brought to you by 3M Car Care, performance driven solutions. This segment of Two Guys Garage is brought to you by Satisfied Brake Products, North America's leading independent manufacturer of friction technologies. Look to Satisfied for all of your stopping needs. Hey, welcome back. I got some of our internals of our transmissions laid out. You can see some of the upgrades that Monster does. They pretty much touch every single part in there and give it an upgrade. Now you can see these two planetary sets, the front and the rear. The original has a four pin, four gear planetary for both front and rear. You can see what they've done is added a fifth pin and extra gear set. Now obviously that's gonna transmit a whole lot more torque. Now there's two types of clutches in an automatic transmission. You got a band clutch and that's gonna hold that drum and inside that drum, you've got a stack of flat clutches and steel plates. Now these guys are gonna stack one on top of the other, like so, all the way down, and then when you clamp it, that's what's gonna give you your bite. Now what they do for the clutch side, is they take this basically a paper cardboard material, and they upgrade it to this red performance lining. It's more of a denser fiber. It gives it a lot more ability to tolerate heat, because that's what's going on in there, is a lot of friction and heat buildup. Now the steel plates, those are upgraded as well. And this is a hardened choline steel. This will handle about three times the amount of heat as the factory ones. Now on the band clamp, you can see this guy, he's smoked. Used to be this yellow color here, but now it's all burnt, it's slipping, and you can see it tearing and separating. Now what Monster does, they use a Kevlar lining. And we're all familiar with like bulletproof vests made out of Kevlar. That's pretty much what's going on inside here. Now, to give it even more bite with the better material, they upgrade the servo. Now anytime you want to make force with, with fluid, it's pressure times effective area. So this is the effective area, this outer diameter here, for this particular servo system. This one's got a much greater area, it's going to be a lot more force. The servo basically sit right here on this band clamp, and that force is what's going to give it, you know, the clamp around that drum. So that's a nice upgrade there for the band clamp. Now, the Sun Shell, this is the same design GM's had for a long time. It's sort of a known weak link. This uh, serrated ring here will actually break off. Now what Monster does, they use a thicker gauge cage and they weld an extra bead on the inside spline ring. Then they come back and you can see the machine it back down. So this thing is gonna handle a ton of torque, it's gonna be stout. They don't just stop there, even the Sprag's upgraded. Now, Sprag is kind of like a one-way clutch. I've got an inner surface and an outer surface. And if I go one way, it's going to allow a slip. But if I go the other way, these little members here will bite and lock it in place. So if you look at the upgrade, it's got a double cage and the inserts are beefier. They don't leave pretty much anything alone. I'm actually getting kind of excited to get this thing together and go bang on some gear. So I should probably stop playing around and get to work. Right, come on back, back a little further, and we can start to drop it down. Okay. It's a lot easier without the front clip on, huh? Yeah, it is. All right, watch your hands these, back there. Okay, drop her down a little bit. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and get this thing married yeah. in. We're gonna get it bolted in. And then once we're finished, we're gonna go ahead and get back to that sail panel on the rear and do a little bit of sheet metal work. All right, let me get on here with the jack. Okay. Welcome to this week's Ask the Host. Now you guys are sending in some great questions. So keep getting on our website, keep sending them in and we'll keep answering them. Now this one's from John L. He's got a 1969 Mustang with a 351 mm, Windsor motor. Fastback, I hope. Nice. So he's upgrading his brakes. I put a disc brake kit on, you know, I'm going from drums to discs in the front. Now after putting everything in and bleeding the system twice, he still has a weak pedal. He's still got the drums in the back, but he thinks the pedal's not quite what it should be. Now, assuming that you've bled it properly and you got the right kit, there's a real match between the master cylinder, the proportioning valve, and the brakes themselves. They all have cylinders that need to be the right size. So assuming that you put in the right parts and you've got the right kit, what you may have is a pedal problem. Yeah, now you may not have noticed, but there's a difference between a manual pedal you know, and a boosted pedal. Now, if we check out this pedal here, this ratio of this length to this length is going to give you your rate, you know, you know, your leverage. So, you know, the same foot pressure you put here, you're going to get a multiplication going into your master cylinder, and now in this case, your booster. 
So a manual pedal is going to have a longer leverage ratio. Mm -hmm. You know, if you add that on top of your booster, you may have a ton of cranking force and your pedal is going to feel like it's weak, but you may have some monster grip. Yep. So get in there and make sure you got the right pedal in there, you know, as well as make sure you got a right match on all your other parts. Yeah, that's one people could definitely miss. All right, our next one we got up is from Chuck G. And he said, which shocks are better for my Jeep Cherokee Sport 2000? What type is better, monotube or twin tube? Now, that's a great question. It's kind of like tires. You know, you can recommend a tire, but it's going to be based on what you're going to do with it. If you get a big, aggressive off-road tire, you're going to get a lot of road noise. It's going to be harsh on the street. So decide what you're going to do with your Cherokee. Now, just about every OEM car is going to come with a twin tube. Now, what that means is, you know, from the outside, you can't tell the difference. This is a twin tube. This is a monotube. Yep, your twin tube is going to be better for, like, more comfort, better ride, like if you want to drag the family around, whereas a monotube is going to be better for more performance, like off-road situations, rock crawling, something like that. Yeah, so, I mean, from the outside, they're pretty much the same. The twin tube, you know, has an additional tube inside, and it's kind of the relationship of where the fluid goes and where the nitrogen charging is. On the twin tube, the nitrogen and the fluid are in the same chamber, and as that piston moves up and down a lot, you can start to get some aeration the monotube will separate those. So no matter how much working you get, off-roading, you know, a lot of action, you're not going to get the aeration, you're not going to get degradation. So if you're really going to beat on this thing, if you're going to do a lot of off-roading, go with the monotube. If you're just going to do an occasional, you still got the family, the groceries, stick with the twin. Good question, Chuck G. All right, we'll see you next time on At The Host. All right. Welcome back. All right, now we're going to work on this sail panel here. And originally, the way they put these two pieces together, this is your uh, quarter panel. Someone's put an aftermarket one on, and your roof piece. These were stamped as two, two halves. When they spot them together, there's kind of this low area, and they would let it. And a lot of guys now would just go in and <laughs> with some mud, plastic filler, whatever you want to call it. Problem is with that, either the lead or the filler, is you've got a, a chance here for there to be contamination or to be shrinkage, neither of which you want in a car that you spent this much time and money on. So what we'd like to do is take this new piece of metal, this is 18 gauge, which is similar to what we've got originally. We're gonna put it in, scribe it, and we're gonna TIG weld it back in. It'll give it a nice, clean, smooth surface so that paint won't wanna shrink and warp and do all this bad nonsense. So today we're really gonna focus on once we scribe it, cut it, put it in, we're gonna focus on TIG welding and kind of how to put this in properly. Now I'm popping the eighth inch holes in the corner. What that's gonna do is make it easier for me to cut my straight lines with a cutoff wheel and have a nice little radius on the edges. A lot of times you'll come up with some weird things. Now I saw some of this uh, factory lead was actually coming through here when I cut this out. So I want to kind of show you one, some of the factory lead, and also show you how to remove it. You see how this is turning liquid? All you do is heat it, turns to liquid, comes out of nowhere. You see if you're looking for it, you'll find it. And you wipe it off, heat it up, turns to liquid, wipe it off, sets it. So I found a couple little spots down in here where uh, there was some old lead. I want to make sure we get that out of the way. All right, we got the fit pretty nice on this thing. And I'm getting it tigged up. And the, the great thing about these is that, you know, you got such a nice, tight, fine heat source. Your beads are really nice and tight. And it really keeps your metal finishing down to a minimum. And everybody thinks it's hard, it takes so much practice, I can't do it. Well, you know what, these aren't really that bad at all. Now I'm going to kind of show you, I think you'll be able to catch this on film. All I'm going to do is run my tungsten, just run it along, keep it nice and tight, and just make little beads. So if you watch, see I'm just making a puddle, dipping, make a puddle dip, make a puddle dip, make a puddle dip, just like dancing. 
It's no big deal. See? Doesn't that look easy? And look how little there is to clean up. So TIG is like a perfect way to weld doing any kind of fab, any kind of sheet metal. Now this thing is going to get a little bit of shrinkage in it. It's going to be a little bit lower, but the cool thing is it's not going to have that hard break. Over time, expansion and contraction of this car, shaking, vibration, is what's going to cause a, a, a line to come through here, and over time it's not going to look good. So this should be a really cool repair that should last a long time. I'm going to finish this up. Right now, I've got to take a break. I can get this thing off my finger. My power steering pump is making noise. How can I correct it? We'll show you how after the break. My power steering is making a noise. How can I correct it? Sometimes seals in the power steering unit can become hardened and begin to leak over time. By adding two ounces of Z-Max to the power steering fluid, you can revitalize those seals. You can also add Z-Max to your fuel system and oil every 6,000 miles to improve the surface lubrication as you drive. This tip is brought to you by Z-Max. Performance you can feel. All right, welcome to the break room, cool parts galore. Yeah, we got some neat stuff. And we got some header gaskets for, you know, the head face and for the collectors. And these are from Heartthrob Exhaust Accessories. These come in pairs, obviously. They come in 063 aluminum, dead soft, which is 3003. They're gonna make sure to get rid of those leaks for you. And nice thing about 3003 or soft aluminum is that if you go ahead, you put it together and you need to redo it, you can anneal these, make them soft again, and seal them back up and really, you know, reuse them. That lets, you know, uneven faces from both flanges kind of go in there and just work their way in and off to get you a good seal. And these things aren't going to deteriorate, they're not going to shrink, and they're certainly not going to blow out on you. So, cool exhaust gaskets from Heartthrob Exhaust Accessories. All right, next one we've got up is from Blue Magic, the headlight lens restorer. This is a way you can go in, brighten them up, really brighten the face of your vehicle and uh, also get some more clarity in your lenses. Yeah, and with a little protective layer, it'll actually keep your lenses from yellowing in the future. Or give you that extra light and some safety that you're gonna need, you know, even on kind of your newer car that starts to fade on you. You can also use these like on a taillight too. Say you've got the taillight kind of some scratches, it looks kind of dirty and dull. Yeah. You can go in, put these on a little, you can put these on a little mini buffer if you have one of those in your shop. Go in, put on, you know, buff it out nice and crystal clear. The Blue Magic Headlight Lens Restore. Next up, we've got the Deltran Battery Tender International. Yeah, now when you know you hit the high life, when you've got all these toys in your garage and you can't decide which one you're gonna mm, charge. Which jet ski? Which motorcycle which should we boat? have? Which boat? Yeah. Now this is a four bank unit. They're each individually gonna charge, watch, and protect each battery. Polarity protected, so you can't hook it up wrong. It's nice because once you hook this thing up, all your toys are ready to roll. Yeah, and you can get additional 25 foot leads for each one of these. So you can mount this guy on the wall. It's a nice lightweight unit. Get it out of the way, but you can go and you know plug in your jet ski over here, your boat over there, and you know keep everything out of the way. Comes with a two year warranty, and you don't want to you don't want your battery to be the reason that you don't pull that cool toy out. So that's right. Or get the job done you need in your shop. Deltran Battery Tinder International. Now next thing we've got up is from. LMC truck. And this is the chrome diamond tread rear bumper. Yeah, now this thing is cool. It comes with a license plate light. And once you put the mounting kit on there, you can use the bumper itself to tow about 8,000 pounds. So pretty much most of what you're gonna be towing out there. Yeah, this thing fits all kinds of models. The GM truck fleet sides from 67 to 87. The Ford style side from 64 to 96. And they carry a full line of bumpers for all kinds of different vehicles. They got a ton of great products. Anything you can think of for your Chevy truck, GMC, Ford, and your Dodges. Yeah, if you got a truck, be sure you check out the LMC truck catalog. All right, back to work, my friend. That's All it. right, let's get it on. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speedtv.com or visit twoguysgarage.com. This tip is brought to you by LMC Truck. Since 1971, all trucks have been manufactured with seat belts, but many older vehicles on the road still drive without them. Avoid the ticket and add extra safety 
with a three-point retractable seatbelt kit. It's a simple direct bolt-on installation while using the original seatbelt mounting holes. They are made from OE quality herringbone webbing and you can color match the belt to your interior. A seatbelt extender is also available, providing an extra 12 inches in length. The seatbelt kit is available for 67 to 87 GM trucks, 73 to 91 Blazer and Suburban, and 67 to 72 Ford trucks. This tip is brought to you by LMC Truck. With over 30,000 truck parts in stock, you can get the right part at the right price right now. Hey, 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 hey. Don't sneak up on somebody. I was just trying to, you know, check out how it's going. I got power tools, dude. Hey, this looks pretty good, yeah, man. You, you better. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Easy now. Now, actually, you don't need a lot of filler when you got a fuller on the set, apparently. <laughs> well, actually, you don't have a lot of filler because we've got a brass chisel that we reach from behind. There's, there's a factory access from behind this thing. And, uh, you know, you get these spots where you can't get a hammer and dolly on them to stretch them. And if you can get even cut an access hole, you know, you can go in and trim out an area where you can get behind it and you can tap either with a hammer or a chisel. Sometimes you can pry whatever you need to do, you know what I mean? Whatever you can find to get a panel out where it ought to be. And then now just a little bit more metal finishing on that and that's good to go. Yeah, we'll be ready to get on the other side. I'm hoping you're not gonna make me do that side. Here you go, dude. All right, well don't run off too far. Oh boy, here we you go. You need that. You're gonna need a pin, you know, a Sharpie, maybe a chisel and a welding helmet, and you are good to go. So, we're out of time for today. Hope we enjoyed exploding a transmission and doing some patch panels. And uh, now we just gotta get the front clip on and some exhaust and whatnot. We'll finish this baby up. Yeah, we're on a roll. See you guys next time. Adios. Over there. Over there. <laughs>